Pan sagini laut salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Aghdu billahi minash shaytan al-lain al-rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahilladhi hadana lihadha wa ma kunna linahtadiyya lawla an hadana Allah wa sallallahu ala ashrafi bariyyatihi wa sayyadi rusulihi wa khatami anbiyaihi وعبده المؤيد ورسوله المسدد المصطفى الأمجد أبي القاسم محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الغر الميامين الذين أذهب الله أنهم الرجس وتهرهم تطهيرا ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أعداء الله من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد صلوات على محمد وآل محمد Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته First of all I would like to extend my heartfelt congratulations on this auspicious night of Milad and birth of our Mawla and Master, Amir al Mu'mineen, Yasub al Deen, Imam al Muttaqeen. امام المشارق والمغارب اسد الله الغالب علي ابن ابي طالب to his heir and leader of our times امام الزمان حضرت مهدي عليه الصلاه والسلام to all his rightful successors and also to all the followers of Ahlul Bayt and in fact to all the followers of truth and lovers of justice. Night is a great night night of a unique personality, night of someone history did not bring any example after him, any like him. And as Repeatedly it is said that praise of Imam, praise of this personality, admiration of this personality, Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, was concealed and hidden by friends and foes equally. Friends could not speak due to the fear of enemies. 
and enemies did not speak out of animosity and jealousy. But with all that, if you look at virtues of this personality, the status of this great man, Allahu Akbar, it has filled, as shair or poet says, from east to west. Centuries passed, centuries passed, and it was still really can easily, you know, easily can listen, can feel reflections of his thoughts and manifestation of his greatness in the various aspects, not only in one angle. There's a great, you know, poet in Arabic, in history of Arabic language and literature. He is probably, if not the best, but at least one of the best poets by the name of Mutanabbi, Abu Tayyab al Mutanabbi, from the fourth century after Hijra. And you can imagine what type of poet he is that on his divan or his compilation of his poetry. More than 40 commentaries have been written so far in Baghdad, in Iraq. And his poetry, his sentences are used as, you know, proverbs, as examples, as sentences full of meaning and is being quoted and so on. And once he was asked this question, why you don't praise Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wassalam. And he replied by saying, Taraktu madhi lil wasiyye muta'amida. Taraktu madhi lil wasiyye muta'amida is kana nooran mustatilan shamila. Allah. He says that I deliberately left praise of Wasi Ali, the successor of the Prophet, the executor of his will. I deliberately left praise of Wasi is Kana Nuran Mustatilan Shamila. Why? Because he was a light, a noor, encompassing, including, covering everything. Mustatilan. Shamila, inclusive. There is no place left where his noor did not reach. Oh, what a beautiful praise. And he says, if something becomes independent, that thing stands on its own does not require support. Please listen carefully. Very deep philosophical message Mutanabbi sent in this poetry. Is kana nuran mustatilan shamila wa is astakalla shay kama bezatihi. Whenever something becomes independent, 
Allahu Akbar. Independent does not require any support to stand. Qama bezatihi. Wa khaza ziya usham se yazhabu baathila. Allahu Akbar. Like description of the sunlight is useless. Because this, you, you, you don't have, sunlight is not something which anybody can deny. Sunlight does not require definition. Sunlight does not require praise. Sunlight does not require explanation. Like there is absolutely no need of light of sun, sunlight to be defined, to be prescribed is like Ali ibn Abi Talib whose noor has reached to every corner and therefore does not need to be praised. Tarakto madhi lil wasiyya ta'amuda Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Brothers, night, night, milad of Mawla Amir al muminin alayhi salatu was salam, night of this man. Uh, when Mutanabbi is saying that I cannot praise Ali than who I am, Allahu Akbar. But really with so much of, you know, pervasive and inclusive and broad noor of Ali filling this world, there are plenty of people who are very blind. They cannot see this noor and this light. And they look for any excuse to deny, to hide, to cover, to conceal. You know, I would like to draw your attention. I have not spoken about this topic. But something, we all of us, we hear. You know that Imam Ali was born in, born in Kaaba. Baytullah al-Haram. This is a specialty of Mawla, Amir al muminin Ali alayhi salatu. No one before and no one after him was born in Kaaba. Various historians have recorded, because night is night of Milad, let me narrate you. Maulad of Amir al Mumineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. You Kryptonians are used to listen to Rivaya of the Mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Let me very briefly narrate for you, you know, a story of the Mawlid of Imam alayhi salatu wa salam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You know, the story of Mawlad of Imam or birth of Imam alayhi salatu was salam as recorded is that it was Fatima bint Asad, this great lady, mother of Amir al muminin she was pregnant of, with Imam and she was having those, you know, pains which are signs of delivery. She rushed to Kaaba and started making tawaf of Kaaba. While she was making tawaf, Saeed ibn Jubair, one of the companions, he narrates from a number of other people and in that chain, Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib is also there. And other people of Makkah. 
that we saw this woman came, wife of Abu Talib, while making tawaf and rubbing her body with the walls of Kaaba. Faqalat, Rabbi inni mu'minatun bik wa bima ja'a min indika min rusulin wa kutubin wa inni musaddiqatun bi kalam jaddi Ibrahim al-Khalil. Allahu Akbar. Sayyid Ibn Jubayr narrating, she said, O oh my Lord, I'm a believer in you and I'm a believer in what you have sent from prophets and books and I am testifying to words of my grandfather Ibrahim al-Khalil and he is the one who built this very very important Bayt al-Atiq unique house for the sake of the one who built this house, Nabi Ibrahim, and for the sake of that baby, who is in my womb, who is my, in my body, make this uh, process of giving birth easy. Look at this dua of Fatima bint Asad. Prophethood didn't start. Prophet is around. 30 years old, Prophet But he did not announce his prophethood, his message of Islam. But she's saying, Inni mu'minatun bik. I am believer in you, O Allah. I am in believing of believer of what my grandfather Khalil, Ibrahim Khalil promoted. The narrator says, we saw all of a sudden behind Mustajar, backside of the Kaaba, all of a sudden, wall of the Kaaba, you know, Allahu Akbar, split it, huh? and a big hole appeared and she entered in Kaaba. Oh. She entered in Kaaba and again wall came together and closed. Ibn Qa'nab says that we went to the door of Kaaba to open to see what is happening. We could not open the door of Kaaba for three days. Only after three days we saw Fatima bint Asad coming out along with a baby whose face was Shining like moon of 14th night. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And when we could not open the door, he says, Fa ulimna min an nazalika amrun min amrillah. When we could not open the door, we understood this is command of Allah beyond our power. Allahu Akbar. This is birth of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam in Kaaba inside. Wall split it. Fatima went in, gave birth and came out. This is, as I said, what we see in the history. But as I said, some people want to fight want to resist against anything which is connected to Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib. Why? I don't want to further explore that other than looking that hadith of the Prophet which is present in all six saha. All six saha, saha satta. Where they say, Ya Ali, la yuhibbuka illa mu'min, wa la yubghizuka illa munafiq. O Ali, no one will love you except believer, and no one will hate you except munafiq and hypocrite. Huh? Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Huh?
वन सेकेंड अलाउड सलावा तला मोहम्मद वाले मोहम्मद हाँ नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नो दे से दैट दिस हदीस इज वीक हाँ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नो how to fight back listen i just would like to draw your attention as i said never got a chance to speak about this very important aspect this special speciality of ali they said no this hadith is weak huh? it's not reliable amazing how it is not reliable when a sunni scholar i'm saying to you not a shi'i have compiled a list of the sunni books from early early centuries of islam until today 117 references where it is being you know recorded that amir al mu'minin was born inside kaaba for example hakim e shapuri इन मुस्तर को सही हैं इबन सब्बाग मालिकी वेरी वेल नोन मालिकी स्कॉलर इन फसूल महिमा मसूदी दिस ग्रेट हिस्टोरियन इन मुरवजाब इबन मगौजली शाफी शबलंजी शाफी इन नूरसार वी गॉट टू पीपुल बाई द नेम ऑफ अब्दुल अजीज शाह वली दहलवी and his son abdul aziz at dahlavi ha ah, these are i'm especially mentioning these two names because they are very very you know important pillars of tablighi jamaat diobandi hmm abdul aziz dahlavi is the one who wrote book tohfaye isna ashariya to prove that shia school is wrong don't have any sympathy for shayyo aur shia ha written books in condemnation of a school of ahlul bayt and shia but amazing is this that both shah waliullah dahlavi and his son shah abdul aziz dahlavi both have them agreed and could not dispute that birth of ali was inside kaaba allahu akbar and they said you know हाकिम ने शाहपुरी मुस्तर को सही है इसे वक्तवात अल्लाह अकबर इसे रवायात नरेशन एंड रिपोर्ट्स अबाउट बर्थ ऑफ इमाम अली इन साइड काबा रीच टू द लेवल ऑफ तवाथुर तवाथुर इज ए लेवल विच इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू डिनाय बट अमेजिंगली पीपल स्टिल डिनाय दैट इज यू नो very easy to you know bypass but amazingly as i said to you so many sunni scholars so many great scholars you know just to read for you quickly what sabagh e maliki wrote allah akbar salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad allah akbar fusul e mahimma look at the sentences of this great maliki scholar well known well established he says wulada bi makkah al musharrafa dakhil bayt al haram fi yawm al jum'a al thalis ashar min shahr allah rajab sana 30 min aam al fil wa lam yulad fi al bayt al haram qablahu ahad siwa he says was born in the great city of makka inside baitullah al haram on the day of juma 13th of rajab 30 years after the elephant's year and no one was born before him inside the baitul haram other than him wa hiya fazilatun khassahu allah taala biha ijlalan lahu this is ibn sabah maliki ha he saying this is a, a special attribute virtue on ibn allah subhanahu wa taala 
made it special for Allah, for Ali. Ijalalan lahu to glorify him. Wa alahu limar tabate and to elevate his status. Wa izharan le karamate and to express his honor, his greatness for the people. So just imagine, brothers, what is this important issue? This is who? Maliki. So now, when you cannot deny that this hadith is not uh, valid or this is only one or two people narrated and it's... Now they come up with an, another story. Listen, please, God, maybe you have heard it. Huh? They say, what is a big deal to be born in Kaaba? It's nothing big deal. It's nothing serious. It's not a virtue. It's not a fazilat. Why? Because Kaaba of that time was full of idols. It was a more than anything temple. There were 360 idols placed inside the Kaaba. So, if Ali was born in Kaaba, so what? First they tried to say this report is unreliable. Now they are saying that this is not a virtue. Even if he was born, so what? I don't understand. If it's not a virtue, then you are why fighting about it. Huh? Anyway, again, another, another, you know, terrible, terrible mistake. Again, this hatred for Amir al muminin does not allow them to see the light. Huh? Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Huh? Okay, the question of idols in the Kaaba. Idols in Kaaba, does it bring huh, the importance and sacredness of Kaaba down? Hmm? This is a question. Is just presence of idols bring Kaaba from its extremely high status huh, down. Look at Kaaba in Quran. Inna awwala baytin wuzi'a linnas bi bakkatan mubarakan wa hudan linnas. The first house established by Allah for the guidance of the people in the city of Makkah is Kaaba. Kaaba Ha, can I ask you, all of you, of course, have, alhamdulillah, familiar with Quran. In the last part of Quran, there is a surah called Suratul Feel. That surah speaks about something. Alam tarafa'ala, alam tarafa'ala rabbuka bi ashabil feel. Kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabil feel. Didn't you see how your Lord done to the people of elephant? That Suratul Mubarakatul Feel is about what? That Suratul Mubarakatul Feel is speaking about attack of Abraha on Kaaba. And Quran is saying that when it happened, in the year Prophet was born, no? Amul Feel, the year of elephant, right? So that time, of course, Kaaba was full of idols, full of idols. So when Abraha came to attack and destroy Kaaba, Quran says that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, you know, army of those birds which attacked on this army of Abraha and destroyed them and protected Kaaba. So I want to ask you if Kaaba was not important, if Kaaba was not holy, holy if Kaaba was not sacred, if Kaaba was nothing important because there were idols inside, so why I Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala protected that Kaaba full of idols from Abraha. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Why? Why Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected this Kaaba from Abraha? So, after idols being inside the Kaaba, still Kaaba is important. Still Kaaba is important. Still Kaaba is, of course, great. 
holy no doubt about it let me bring another angle ha huh? quran says that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after he migrated to madina couple of months i can't not remember almost i think 20 months or so he was in madina and he used to make namaz and salat in the direction of masjidul aqsa he used to make salat in the direction of masjidul aqsa but quran says prophet was in sallallahu alaihi wasallam very happy about it you know quran says you have thar nara taqallub wajhak ha quran says that we see that your face is not very happy to pray salat toward masjidul aqsa toward jerusalem baitul maqdas ha ha why because jews used to tease and criticize prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say how come you don't have your own qibla you make namaz in direction of our holy place our sacred place our sacred temple he used to teach like that he used to taunt like that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet used to look at the sky that wallah when that time will come when we will have our own qibla allahu akbar and then i don't want to go in details in while he was in the state of namaz while he was performing salat in the direction of baitul maqdas jerusalem masjidul aqsa command came turn your direction ila shatr al masjid al haram in the direction of makka masjid al haram and prophet turned the direction and qibla was changed to please prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad again question that when qibla was changed from masjid al aqsa to masjid al haram or baitullah or kaaba in makka was makka or the kaaba was clean from idols or still idols were there no my brother idols were still there and prophet was very happy to make namaz in the direction of the same kaaba full of aida salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad not one year not two years for six years prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam performed five times salat in the direction of same kaaba which has 360 idols kaaba was not important kaaba was no big deal because there were idols inside so why prophet was performing salat and then if prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was worried about jews that they were criticizing him they were taunting him they were saying to him that you are making you know namaz in direction of our holy place our temple for example so why not prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was worried about his worst enemies mushrikeen and quraish of makka that they will say now you are performing salat in the direction of the place where our idols are there and we worship them but prophet was not worried prophet never minded what they will say salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad so this argument that birth in kaaba is not a fazilat is not a virtue is nothing to talk about it because that time kaaba was full of idols is also baseless yes kaaba was full of idols no doubt about it but idol worshipper came in that kaaba that is important salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad and then sometimes ya allah and then sometimes they come up with another unique argument ha huh? laughable they say that if birth in kaaba was virtuous was something to speak and praise and fazila then what about rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam himself ha huh? amazing you are trying to say 
that Ali got a fazilat, Ali got a virtue which Rasulullah does not have. If birth in Kaaba is such a special thing, is such a special quality, then Allah should have given it to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you want to say that Ali was given something, even Prophet did not get it? Are you trying to say that Ali is higher than Prophet? Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Again, again, my brothers and sisters. You know, these, these are all questions which come out not from logic or reasoning or rationality. They all come out from that jealousy and from that hatred which they have for Mawla Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad ha. A, a poet in Urdu said very beautifully that for every disease, for every sickness, some of the doctors are sitting here, for every disease, for every sickness, there is a cure. But for hatred of Ali and jealousy of Ali, there is no cure for it. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now, this question that how come Prophet did not get this special status, this special virtue and Ali got it. Again, misunderstanding, brothers. You know, yes, it's a virtue of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam. But it does not bring Prophet lower than, for example, Amir al-Mumineen alayhi salam. No. Why? Because this is the system of hikmah and wisdom of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gives something to someone and gives something else to someone. It does not mean that because we have given you this thing and we have not given another person that thing, it brings him down. Can I ask you another question? Let us turn the same question which they ask us, that why Prophet was not born in Kaaba. Why Ali was born in Kaaba? We can ask also the same question. Why Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam could manage to cross the ocean, Allahu Akbar, without any problem and rescued? But we don't see this mu'jiza, this miracle in the life of the Prophet. Why Nabi Dawood used to take iron, used to melt like wax, huh? But Prophet, for example, we never saw something like that. For example, Nabi Isa, alayhi salatu was salam, used to, you know, revive the people who are dead. Okay, capacity there, but we don't see Prophet have done that, for example. Huh? No. It, it, this does not mean that he is higher or is lower. No. We do not understand what was special about Allahu Akbar. Speciality is very clear. Hmm. Speciality is also very clear. Allahu Akbar. Can I say something? Very, very uh, thought-provoking point for those people who little bit think deeply. My brother, Kaaba. Kaaba was always center of attention for our Nabi and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. That verse which I recited just now about that changing of direction of Qibla. That, Nara, O Prophet, we see that your heart, your mind, your eyes are all the time looking toward Kaaba. That was direction which Prophet always used to look at that direction. Allahu Akbar. And Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided, Allah responded to this desire, to this wish of our Nabi. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by making Kaaba Qibla of Muslimin. Now that is beloved of Rasulullah. That is where Prophet's eyes were looking. Where? Kaaba. And from that Kaaba was related something which was also apple of the eye of Rasulullah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.
Allahu Akbar. Sometimes they, they don't have really a reason. Huh? Why they don't ask this question, Allahu Akbar, you know? Sometimes they say, no, 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 no. Fatima, astaghfirullah, Fatima binti Ashad, mother of Mawla Amir al muminin she came uh, to ask for the intercession of idols. She came to seek help from the idols. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. She came to ask idols to help her out in that difficult time. Absolutely baseless again. Absolutely laughable again. Allahu Akbar. Who is Fatima binti Asad? Wife of Abu Talib. You know, yes, the whole society was worshipping idols. But Abu Talib was never idol worshipper. Fatima bint Asad was never idol worshipper. They have respect for Kaaba, yes. Not because of the idols. As in that sentence which is recorded in history, what Fatima bint Asad say. For the sake of the person who built this house and for the sake of this baby who is in my body, O oh Allah, make things easy for me. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Let me, let me say here something very, very quickly in a, in a, in a bracket. Huh? You know, Abu Talib and Fatima bint Asad never ever, you know, used to seek intercession or help from idols. Never. Hmm. Go look at the history of Arab, history of Makkah. There are a number of times when drought happened. There was no, no rain at all. It was very, very difficult situation. Now these mushrikeen of Makkah, I'm talking about before Islam, long before Islam, long before, years before Islam. So, Allahu Akbar. There's no rain. Drought. Very big problem and challenge. Difficult time. Now they wanted to pray. They wanted to make duha from God to send the rain. rain. Now what history of Arab says? You know what they said? Even they, those who were idol worshippers, they also knew that idols can't do anything. So what they did? They came to Abu Talib. Allah. History. At least three times it is recorded. They came to Abu Talib and said to Abu Talib, please come and pray for us. Question is, in Arab history, they write, what was the reason for this mushrikeen of Makkah to come and ask for prayers from Abu Talib. Allahu Akbar. You know, it is in the history recorded that they say, you know why? Because Abu Talib is from the descendants of Ibrahim. Ali Ibrahim. Allahu Akbar. And this house is built by Ibrahim. So the best person who is capable to make dua is Ali Ibrahim. Allahu Akbar. Very, very important point, brothers. A lot of time we ask this question. Why Ali Muhammad? Why Ali Muhammad? Why family of Muhammad? My brother, this is Quranic. This is historical. This is history of Ambiya always. Ali Imran. Ali Ibrahim. Ali Ishaq. Ali Yaqub. And so on and so on. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What? And... What Ab Abu Talib did, how Abu Talib went to make dua, please listen carefully. If somebody wants to say that Fatima bint Asad went for shafa'at of the idols at the time of the birth of Mawla Amir al muminin they must look at the history of Arab. Long before birth of Imam Ali, they came to ask Abu Talib to pray. Abu Talib, history. Abu Talib came out of the house. While who was with him? His young nephew, Muhammad. Allahu Akbar. His young nephew, Muhammad. And he came and stood in front of Kaaba and raised his hand. And that's the very well-known poetry which 
Allahu Akbar, Abu Talib said about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa And in that first sentence of that poetry, how he praises Prophet Muhammad, he says, wa abiyad yastasqil ghimamu bi wajhihi. Allahu Akbar. And this face, which is so full of noor and light, is a face when you want to ask for rain, you ask, when you ask for ghamam means clouds, full of rain, full of water, you ask through this face, Allahu Akbar. وَأَبْيَزُ يَسْتَسْقِ الْغِمَامُ بِوَجْعِهِ سَمَالُ الْيَتَوْمَا اِسْمَةٌ لِلْأَرَامِلِ He is the one who is shelter of orphans and refuge of uh, widows, Allahu Akbar. That's how he praises Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. You can do it afterward also, Brother Alim. You are disturbing. This is not right. Huh? You're talking about Imam Ali. Huh? Imam Ali is more important than the cake. Huh? Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Huh? But let me finish it. Huh? Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Huh? Okay, salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Huh? Not the salawat with the lovers of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Huh? This is Abu Talib when he wanted to make shafaat, he never made shafaat by idols. He said, Muhammad is the shafi. If I want to ask for rain, I will ask from Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. This is. Now, last point, and I will inshallah conclude. That why? You know, it's amazing. It's amazing, really, sometimes. When we look at, you know, and Amir al himself says that, he himself says that, that when Maryam, salamullahi alayha, wanted to give birth to Nabi Isa, Allahu Akbar, what Quran says, Faja al makhaz huh? So what Allah said to Maryam, go out of the masjid, huh? Masjid is not a place of giving birth. It's not a maternity home. It's a place of worship. It's not a labor room. No. So Maryam with that greatness, who wanted to give birth to the Nabi like Isa, time came, someone who was more takif in the masjid. Maryam never used to go out of that masjid. Masjid is Maryam. I said, wow, Nazar. That she will live in the masjid until she dies. She was in masjid all the time. But at the time of the birth of Nabi Isa, what happened? Allah commanded, Maryam, go out of the masjid. Masjid is not a labor room. Masjid is not a delivery place. Huh? Masjid is a place of worship and ibadat. But how this case completely opposite in case of Mahula Amir al -Mumnin. Here Maryam was inside the masjid. Allah said, to deliver Isa, go out of the masjid. Here Fatima bint Asad is out of the Kaaba, out of Baitullah. And Allah opens the balls of Kaaba, asking Fatima bint Asad to come inside and give birth to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Oh, and then you say it's not special, huh? Allahu Akbar. And then a question is in our mind, always brothers. What is the secret? Just this sentence. Very important really. What is the secret of birth of Imam? What was the message given to us by Ali being born in Kaaba? My brother, I don't have time. If you look at different verses of Holy Quran speak about Kaaba, that's the Final result of my discussion tonight, brothers. Kaaba 
Baytullah is symbol of Tawheed. Qiyaman linnas. It's a symbol of belief in one Allah. It's a center of Tawheed. Okay? Kaaba is Tawheed. Believe in one Allah. Now what is the connection between birth of Imam Ali and Kaaba? My brother, connection is very clear. Connection is the one which Ali's son, Ali ibn Musa Riza, explained it already in Hadith of Zahab when he said, Kalimatu la ilaha illallah hisni faman dakhla hisni faqad amina min azawbi. When Imam Riza, eighth Imam of Ahlul Bayt, reached to Naishapur, what he said to the people? Hadith Qudsi he reported and narrated for the people of Naishapur. He said, Allah said, Kalima of la ilaha illallah is my castle, is my fort. Man dakhla. Whoever enters in this court, he is protected from my azab. What is kalima la ilaha illallah? Kalima of tawheed. Kalima of belief in one Allah. In this hadith, Imam Raza said that whoever enters in the qila, in the, in, the, uh, in the castle, in the fortress of tawheed, he is protected from azab of Allah. Imam Raza did not stop there. Imam moved a little bit further. And what he said? Amma bashurutiha wa sharaitiha. But to enter into castle of Tawheed, into court of Tawheed, there are conditions. You cannot get into Tawheed without fulfilling those conditions. People ask, Ibn Rasulullah, what is the condition to enter in Tawheed? Imam said, Wa anaw min And I am one of the conditions to enter into castle of Tawheed. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Brothers, message is very clear. Tawheed without imamat, not possible. Tawheed without imamat, incomplete. Tawheed without Ali, Allahu Akbar. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahu Akbar. And our Imams repeated that. In Hajj, for example, huh? just to complete this, the connection between birth of Imam Ali in Kaaba. What is the connection? What is the philosophy? What is the secret? What is the message of birth of Ali in Kaaba? Is deep connection between Tawheed and Imamat. Huh? Allahu Akbar. Imam Muhammad Bakr. Alayhi salatu is saying, and when you come to make tawaf around this house built of stone, means Baytullah al Haram, don't forget, after making tawaf, come to visit us, because this Hajj will not be complete without meeting us. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. In another hadith, Imam, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam is saying, Kamalul Hajjay Laqaul Imam. Where is climax of Hajj? Where is climax of Hajj? Hajj is around Kaaba. Hajj is Tawheed. Hajj is practical expression of Tawheed. But where this Hajj reaches to its perfection, to its climax, Laqaul Imam, when you meet with your Imam. Brothers, Imamat is a spread of Tawheed. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Otherwise, the issue is not about that building. Ah, let me say something. Let me say something. Some people took it this way. Some people asked this question. Is birth of Imam Ali in Kaaba was an honor for Ali or other way around. 
it was honor of kaaba to have ali born inside that building ha salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad yes kaaba expression of tauhid and tauhid without imamat not possible may almighty allah subhanahu wa taala grant us all tawfiq to be among the followers lovers and those who are mutamassik holding fast to wilayat of maula amirul mu'minin ali ibn abi talib alayhi salatu was salam salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad Heather, you want to read Qasida? Come. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. This young Heather, inshallah, will read Qasida for us, inshallah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.